It's the 24 hours of Le Mans. Good to go. And that's the... Uh, that was a tough Good races. evening, everybody. Yeah, good Wait. evening, everybody. Wait um, till some people get on here. Yeah, Steve left me a message. Remember my buddy Steve? I told you he said he just blew a heart and a half and went and got a... A 24-hour car of Camaro. Yeah. I want to be driving night for him. He just left me a message yesterday. I never called him back. Um, but he wants to go do the 24-hour Thunder Hill. No, 25-hour Thunder Hill. And he's a relief driver. Somebody he knows that won't lose places and won't crash the car. You know? Right. Um, it'd be suck to get woken up at 4.30 in the morning as the primary driver and told your car was wrecked in turn 11. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sorry about that, bruh. Do what you can. Yeah. You got anybody on here? Beep boop, beep boop. Somebody's messaging me. I really don't care. Wait, I want to see. I want to see the lag. Okay. Should be pretty good. You know what? Huh? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So about fifteen seconds, twenty seconds. Yeah. Um, that phone has got, like I said, the best internet connection money can buy. And the only time and I have it set up on on automatically connect, so when I come home, it's I'm already on the Wi-Fi, obviously, like everybody would do. Um, but whenever I'm tuning one of the cars or uploading whatever videos we make here to go to YouTube, I have to disconnect from it. I don't know why, but no, really. yeah. So, welcome everybody to episode number 18. Let's just get into it. Um, if you come in later than this right now, then you can uh, rewind it later. So. Um, I wanted to talk about just a couple small things tonight, um, but first let's do some shout outs. I want to give a shout out to Rich Lavoc, my buddy here, I'm a partner in crime. Uh, I want hey, to give buddy. a huge shout out to not only my shark team, attending and non-attending, um, but uh, everybody that, uh, that was at the Smokies today, I hope you guys just had a killer time. Um, and... Uh, Especially, you know, my, my, my shark team. I know a lot of my shark team went out there to race the race. So I, go, I hope you guys had a good time and ran fast. I'll roll back the, the, the tapes from that race in the next day or two and just kind of watch what I can see. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that, that would have been really cool to go to. Um, and I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Paul Peterson and Shark RC Bodies. Um, and uh, a huge shout out to Steve Villanueva of R1, R1 Electronics, Speed Controls, Motors battery packs, soon to come servos, um, all kinds of stuff coming. Um, and I know I've been saying that for a while, but you know, the owner of the company is a real perfectionist and I, I agree with him, you know, why rush something and get it wrong. So, um, really cool stuff coming. Um, but I want to, uh, I kind of wanted to, to talk about, uh, some new stuff that I'm trying and figuring out, uh, and hopefully working with Mark Vine with, um, and that is uh, some of the 22S stuff. So it's kind of what I was running last week. I'll give you a recap on that in a little while. Uh, give a huge shout out to DE Race Tires. Uh, I use them on all, all, just about all my rear motor cars. Um, except for this one we were running because we could run sticky. You know, I only want to run those tires. If I, can, if, I can, if I can lube the tires, if I can goop, then, then I got to use them. You know what I'm saying? Um, Definitely an advantage, I think. But not, I don't know though, because you know, those, those tires, you're, you're running what we run on all the other cars, the DE Outlaws, and you're running they, fast, dude. They so, pretty good, but I it, don't know if, yeah. you, if that tenth of a second or two tenths of a second it is there. means something. It is there. So I yeah. saw, I saw one of the heavy hitters, I believe it was Morgan. Chris Silva can shine in because he's on right now. Oh, is he? What's up, Chris? I think it was Morgan. You had to race Morgan. And Morgan, I think it was like the, I don't know, the third round or something like that. So, yeah. And and Morgan just left on you, and I don't think no, it was... wasn't the third. It was my just buyback round where I read. The... Oh, was it the first round? It was a, I got that on video. Oh, okay, buyback okay. round. Yeah. Well, what happened? What I saw from my point of view was the fact that regardless of whether you were sleeping or not, his car just launched on you and immediately got a good twelve feet on you. But then at about sixty feet, seventy feet, 
the cars were just like this the whole way out. And I was yeah. like, wow, Rich's car, if we could get that thing to hook off the line yeah. a little bit faster. Yeah. yeah. You know, so um, last weekend, guys, we had the privilege uh, to uh, to travel, and we're lucky enough to um, to travel out to Sacramento and race with the 916 guys. Um, the guys that were putting it on did a fabulous job. Um, they have a really cool system out there. Um, I've raced on it before. It's just a really, really nice system with the lights and the, and the you know, the printouts. It is everything. a good system. I just couldn't. I was the only one that couldn't get it to work. So, so and we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. So, because we need to explain yeah. to, to the people that are our followers, you know what I'm saying, what happened. And if you show up at a race, what you're not going to want to have yeah. in your car. Yeah, definitely. Learn from my mistake. But so, is what it is. in the prior day or two of testing, the cars we were going to take out there, the cars, the the prime candidates. We we finally uh, we got to the day of the race and it was at night. And I said, okay, we're gonna take this car and this car for me. We're gonna take this car for Emma. We're gonna take whatever. You know, we're gonna bring your car out. And out of my two cars, we're gonna pick which one we're gonna run. And it actually ended up not being either of those cars. Not the prototype that I can't talk about, nor the nor the bullet car. Right. Um. In that testing, I just happened to just kind of curiously put down the 22S that I've been fooling with, and the car just worked flawlessly. Um, I did, obviously, I, I've never run this car stock, so, um, you know, there was parts that came off of it right from the get-go, some must-haves, and I'll actually have them brand new in the package as well as in this car to show you what, what, um, what parts we've put into it so far. Um, um, Mark Vine reached out to me and he goes, you know, man, I know you go way back with rear motors and I, I, I see a lot of good things out of this 22S. Uh, and I said, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to get a better chassis under it. Um, this car actually doesn't have a bullet under it yet, which is, I'm, I'm hoping it does soon. Um, and we'll try and try and get a hold of one the next, uh, the next go round. Um, and what's up, Mark Vine? Um, we've been playing phone tag all week. Um, and, uh, it's just a really, really cool deal. So um, what ended up happening was that I said, you know, the Corleone is fast. I mean, it was it was the fastest car I had. It was the fastest thing in our arsenal. But I do two good rips with it, and it would go funky. I don't know if it was, it must have been something I'm doing. I don't know what it was, but I feel like I have had too many cars, and I've been jumping around and not giving certain cars attention. And I want to do that with is in the in the mid motor prep world. I want to do that with my prototype car, and with the race that's coming up uh, in Delta next weekend. I want to do stuff like is happening here, um, and we'll get to that in a second. So um, I want to give a shout out really quick and show these off. I meant to do this last weekend. Hey, hey, Emma. Can you bring me some glasses, baby? I forgot them again. I don't have any in here. You know what's happening now is, remember how a couple weeks ago I bought all these glasses? Well, you put them everywhere. Oh, and I put them everywhere. Well, now, just due to normal everyday human functionality, they have all grouped like in the bathroom. Or, or, I, can't, I can't find them. Uh, maybe check the bath or the, the bedroom. Why do That's you... what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah, why do you need them in the bathroom? Then? Because I can't see that small little thing in the bathroom without the glasses. <laughs> Because I'll look at Facebook while I'm pooping, all right? Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> um, yeah, nobody here. Oh, you're awesome. Know. Hey, hey. You got about two minutes and you're coming in, okay? Maybe, maybe, hey. Okay, never mind. You're good to go. My daughter played an awesome soccer goal. We won 6-0 yeah, to to today. And, uh, and Emma made two of the goals. Nice. So I was kind of stoked about that. So let me right. put this on. Uh, how many people got watching? You got a couple people on there? Eleven. Okay. Um, um, let me let me see. See, yeah, read some through some comments and stuff while I'm while I'm getting at this. Um, What's I up, Rick? Wanna... Rick Turner. I don't see anybody else showing up on here. I don't see all the names. I'm just going to tell you about the company because I can tell you the first guy's name, but I always murder his last name. I don't know what his actual last name is. Um, but this was uh, the owner of Madfish Motorsports reached out and got me some of these. Uh, I'm going to keep one myself, and I think it's only fair that I take the other set and give it to somebody like Rich Lavoc, who helps us put these, uh, you know, I mean, he's part of the production team right now that's helping us do a little uh, a little bit of advertising for this guy. So these are pretty cool. This guy obviously has 
has some work in the automotive industry with with or some kind of sewing skills because these seams are just perfectly parallel and these just look really really nice and what this is going to do um gosh should have reached out you know and, and if he's watching i'm really sorry i uh i um i forgot to get the price point on these i think they're like 25 30 bucks 35 bucks something like that so for Whatever he's selling them for, you're going to get two sets of these. Let me read this really quick. Maybe that'll make some more sense. Let's get some Mad Fish in here. Mad Fish tire covers. No prep RC drag tire covers. These covers will fit standard RC drag tire and small outlaw tire. For, cle uh, for clean tire transport use only. Hand handmade in the United States by Jake and Wade. Benefits of using Mad Fish tire covers. A. Tires stay clean. B, keep tire marks off of your automobile seats while transporting, which is kind of cool. Uh, C, made with automotive vinyl and quality thread. Uh, D, they look cool. Uh, and E, you can sleep with your car next to you without leaving tire marks on your sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Wade. Um, so find us on social media at Madfish Motorsports. I know these guys, I feel like these guys are just kind of starting to bust in the market with some out-of-the-box ideas, and that's why I had them send them to me. Um, and, and I want to see what else they're capable of. So for right now... Wade's on here right now. He is he on here? 20, 20 to 30 bucks. Okay, 20 to 30 bucks. So I guess that's depending on the style that they are uh, or probably, something like that. Yeah, okay. Probably if you have to... Change up, maybe Do you want to hand me just or... one full size SCT wheel? Uh, full size? And I've actually used the black ones. So what do we got here? We got a DE Fennin, which is your standard, uh, what is it, 3025 or whatever. Um, and these things. Actually. Go right on the tire. If I got it centered. Oh, that was. That's what I was doing wrong. And they, they will just keep your tire nice and clean wherever you're going. That's awesome. Now you can take the tires off the cars. I personally, when I'm transporting, um, I sometimes will run dummy wheels just to transport. Um, you can do that as well. But if you have, if you're somebody who's just been testing that car, he doesn't want to touch it. Uh, I have cars like that too, where I'll keep the wheels on. And, and from now on, I'll probably be using these because if that tire is just good and it's been clean and sanitized where I can put it in these, it's going to be just as clean when I take it out. It's also not going to leave any marks on anything. So I think that's pretty cool. That and like cool. I said, I, I don't know how much justice the video does, the video feed right now, but these things are made really, really nicely. Um, he, he does upholstery. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I mean, you look at this. I, I need a yeah. motorcycle seat done, actually. He needs a motorcycle seat done. So there you go. Um, it looks like Wade, um, what is the other guy's name? Wade and Jake. I, I know Wade. I, I don't know about Jake, but Wade Wade's a guy I see on the on the, on the web all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, if you guys have some other upholstery needs, um, you can reach out to them too, Madfish. Uh, motorsports um, but these are uh, these are pretty awesome um, from my experience they fit up in the top up in the up in the body pretty well it's not like they're they're, they're too big um, and they're just the right size and they yeah they'll, they'll work just good and there's no way they're gonna slip off they they, they contour the wheel very well um, but yeah that's a cool product so um, I want to see what these guys are capable of and I want to throw it right back at them through the video right now and say push yourself guys This is the kind of idea that leads to another idea that leads to another idea and Once you get to that one idea, you're like, oh my god, you know what I'm saying? This is a great. This is a car covers uh, I'm telling you full shit, car man. covers. Yeah uh, uh, RC drag carrying cases All protective. Yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you dude with with uh, it's long enough for the wheelie bar You don't have to touch the car. That's the only thing Make about taking my cars. Casket. One of the reasons why I don't want to fly with them is my bars, it takes a lot of work to get everything working like it is. And the last thing I want to do is unbolt it and bolt it back together in a freaking hotel room, you know? Um, so that, that's kind of, um, some of my cars I could do that, you know, but some of my cars are just, there's more work to the wheelie bar. But anyway, um, so yeah, I want to give a huge shout out to Madfish Motorsports and Wade and Jake um, for making a killer product. And uh, let's try putting one of these on a D. Now I'm assuming... Well, they're going to be a little bit looser, but they're going to stretch them out because they're wider. Yeah, and it goes right on a, a, a DE Street Outlaw as well. This one I think was flattened in the box, though. 
Uh, Those are nice. Definitely. Yeah, they work. So, um, I have told Rich actually likes them. I said, well, you know, to be honest, you know, fair's fair. And the gentleman sent them to me, and I said, well, what set do you want? I'm keeping the pink ones. So he picked the black ones. <laughs> I made it easy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are for you, Rich, and uh, we'll be putting these Thank on the you, car. Sir. Thank you, Wade. Um, I think I'm going to do... I think I'm going to do a raffle right now. Should we do a raffle for some phenons? Balanced? You've been itching to get rid of them. I have. Um... I'm just, I got too much stuff. I mean, this, we've only been in this, this room is not very big, you guys. I don't know how big it looks on here, but it's, uh, it's nine feet by 14 feet. It's not big in my whole, yeah, give him a swoop around. I just bumped into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, it's RC all day long, every day, and it's, it's got a lot of pit space, but. Mind you, I did not walk in a circle. I can't, I, he can't <laughs> leave the room right now unless I scoot the whole table back, so. <laughs> Um, why do I have, Make let's, it work. let's put these guys away. Um, I like these mad, these mad fish stickers are badass, dude. I'm putting those on my ride. Those are pretty cool. Um, so thank you Wade and Jake for reaching out to me. Um, I'm hoping that when you guys got some more products in the future, you guys will uh, feel the need to funnel them through me. I'm hoping in the next 24 to 48 hours, as this video gets kind of pushed around the internet, um, that maybe you guys will have an increase in sales. It's usually kind of how it works. So, um, yeah, he seems like a nice guy. He's a really polite guy. I love their logo. I love, I love, you know, they basically did something you don't see in RC. They made a mission statement. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome, yeah. And this is this is pretty cool. This is a, a guy that's that's really thinking. So um, let's get into here. I'll put that up there. That's going to go in the letter drawer from over the last two years. All the letters we've gotten. One of these nights we ought to have a, a a letter night of all the you know the law enforcement officers that have reached out to me and all the people we've helped that have written letters and we do it around um, nighttime around the fire. We sit drink yeah, sip we'll tea, kumbaya, and everything good. <laughs> Smoke um, cigars. You know, this uh, this thing, I'd like to say sometimes, I'd like to think, maybe it's just my own ego talking, that I helped get this sport as big as it is, but this sport has absolutely, because of ladies and gentlemen like you, far surpassed what I was starting a couple years ago with the videos and stuff, um, and it, it, it has gotten bigger than I ever thought it would, and I couldn't, I you know, we're on, on episode 18, me and Rich finished the last two or three up. For 707 when nobody else would show up um and we did what 30 something of them i don't remember 33 of them or something like yeah. that and um you know through all those videos and the hundreds of hours worth of talking about stuff and this and that the very first video i said if we can just help one guy and we have helped so many people that it, at the end of the day it's part little parts and pieces of myself that I've given to you guys, whether it be knowledge or something you couldn't get or or information that you needed on something or anybody that I can help. You know, and I can't help everybody, you know. Um, I had a, a guy reach out to me the other day and say, hey, can you make a donation to so-and-so fund and maybe donate a car? And I'm like, I, I can't do that, man. You know, I just had to sell a car to buy my daughter a new car, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but <laughs> so... Um, we have really, really, really reached a lot of people. I'm very, very grateful for being able to do this. Um, I'm really grateful for the loving side of the hobby, which is something also I want to talk about, which is some of the, the, the drama of the keyboard warriors and how that just drags the sport down. Uh, I'm very, very fortunate to live the life that I do and have friends like Rich. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to have him be a part of this ride. Um, and I want, to keep it, I want to keep it coming to you guys. So um, with that being said, we're going to take a sip of ginger ale. Now, let's see if I can find a place. This is, what does that look like, Rich? That looks like a low slung, bad to the bone, outlaw car. This car's got a three-turn-ish motor in it. It's fully equipped with R1 gear. It's got a lot of body mounts. <laughs> <laughs> all those body which mounts. is kind of just, that's the only thing that keeps a it's prototypical body on this it's car. prototypical right now since i have so much i'm thinking about um the end product of something like this will be having these points but also having um there will be no hole for a, a body clip and no body clip it'll just be bolts with, with big countersunk washers on them that just kind of 
bolt the body on. So the rigidity of this body and the mounts, people can say they look it looks funny all they want, but there's just there's no Doesn't movement. Yeah. You know, like look at this car. Look at the difference. Can you see that on the camera? You will now. See the movement? This is a stock slash with the stock four mounting holes. See how much deflection is in that body? You know, you're vibrating down the track, you know? This is just nothing. This body is just solid to the chassis. So, and that's, I think that is a huge, huge, huge uh, point. And that's where I kind of went with this car. This car was kind of already laid out to do that. And what this car is, is this is, well, it only takes 34 minutes to get the whole on. <laughs> this is the only drawback. Okay. This is a 22S. So when I told you guys earlier in the video how I couldn't get either of my heavy hitting cars just dialed where I wanted to do them, um, and not so much to go out and try and win. I know a lot of the guys in Sacramento are fast. Um, I think I've gone as just as fast as that on cars, but I'm not doing it consistently with my mid-motor stuff. This car performed so freaking well. When we put it on the ground, we did three hits with it in practice. It ran so good. I looked at Rich, he looked at me. We said, yep, put it away. So we put it away and this happened to be the car that I brought in because at that point, that I just wanted to make some rounds and I, I went seven rounds with the car, you know, um, six rounds with the car, seven rounds with the car, somewhere around there. Um, but the car performed well. So the fourth time I ever ran the car was my first hit in Sacramento and it ran a 207 at 69. Which isn't bad. Nope. A couple more tweaks. The only problem that kept slowing the car down is I had these two body mounts too far. These stock body mounts were too far back for a pro mod body, and I was getting I was getting a, a bumper a lot of bounce. Deflection ha, cha, 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 cha. Um, and, and it just it really wasn't working good. So if you're willing, or if you're interested right now, and you see this video about building something that's on the cheaper end, so you can get in and be a heavy hitter with some of these guys. Um, this is a really good chassis to do it, and that makes me all the more uh, excited about getting uh, together with um, with uh, Mark Vine and Bob Vine and getting a bullet under one of these. Um, so what this is, is this is a bone stock roller. It's a $219 available at Jake's Performance Hobbies in Runner Park. Tuesday through Saturday, 707-586-3375. You can get one of these for $219. Um, and what we've done, uh, we'll show you more about the plastic alteration in here because a lot of the plastics are gone and, and we didn't buy anything. We didn't have to make anything. We just kind of took what they had and got rid of a lot of it. Um, the only other things that we've done to it is we've added some axles. When you go heavy hitting out law power with this thing, there's a couple things that need to be changed. I think the diff is okay, but I went with, I have every part that's in this car other than what it makes it stock of a 22S right here. Cause I'm getting ready, we'll get to that in a minute. This is a G, G2 diff. Now Dan, why are you, that comes with a gear diff that's O-ringed. Why would you go to that? It's got a plastic gear on it. Well, because number one, the gears inside the tranny rarely slip unless they're an idler gear. If you have a metal idler gear and a metal top shaft gear and they're of the same alloy, that diff gear, because it's so wide and so big in diameter, you're never going to hurt it. I, I, I ran the one that just came out of the Corleone when we freshened up the, the transmission in it before I sold it, um, had... 300 hits on it, 400, and it still looks brand new. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why is the same reason why I'm changing the axles. The first couple of people, when I built this car that had put big power in it like this, kept snapping the axles. And it dawned on me, well, you guys, you, uh, Horizon obviously used the same formula and dimensions for the axles they put in it, but they used a cheap Chinese alloy that doesn't handle a three, three, you know, next to three horsepower motor. So before I even ran this car, I kind of paid attention and I built it slow um, so that I could get the parts that are on it on it. Um, I put the um, 5.0, we put the 5.0 CV drive shaft. These are the 60, 67 millimeter drive shafts. 
And the reason why is because they're the exact same axle that, that this car comes with, but they're of a better alloy. They're a better quality of axle. They don't snap. That's exactly why I did the diff. It wasn't because it was plastic or because of this or that. It's because the out drives in the diff, whatever cheap Chinese steel that they're making these axles out of, they're making the out drives out of. So before I changed to the G2 diff with the better alloy out drives, we had three hits on the car and the dog bone slots were already trenched out from three hits with a good axle in them. So now we have the good G2 diff. We have the good 67 5.0 22 lay down elite, you know, like, like, uh, like the Corleone was that's the, those were, those were backup axles from the Corleone. The other thing we put in it, our design can't say enough about this company. Everything they put out is just money. Uh, this is the RCRI um, wheelie bar mount and carbon fiber brace for the bottom of the chassis. So that is what's in this car. RCRI, no, our design. Or our design. Our design, I'm sorry. Correction. Correction. Our design. Our design. The one other thing I didn't like about the stock car. I love the shape of the rear body mount, but because they use plastics on it and the V comes out so far to this location, it's really, really susceptible to doing this. See all that deflection on this thing? Well, I didn't want that in this body. I wanted it to be, see how stiff that is? I mean, that body, if it moves, the chassis moves. So what I did was I bought the R design and it comes with all this stuff you see back here, okay? Except for the light, that's for, for night racing. This is something else we can talk about. I actually got this idea from Chris Sil <laughs> Silvan. Huh? One thing at a time, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it's caffeine, bro. <laughs> so that is the, not only is it a brace, but it's the upper uh, carbon fiber shock, I mean, not shock tower, um, body mount. But it also has a, a little waterfall right here that's threaded so you can put a fan on it if you want a fan, which is kind of, you know, it's kind of cool that you have that option with that. The only thing else that you're seeing back here that's not stock is a set of Jake's Performance Hobbies 12 inch carbon fiber wheelie bars. I use solids on this one. And hey, Emma, what? come here for a minute. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a certain gentleman out there that's watching. This is coming your way. Is my tongue blue? Oh my God, you have a blue mustache even. What's up? How you doing? Come over here for a second. Tell us about your car. What do you know about your car? It's fast. It's fast. What else do you know about it? Nothing. What kind of tires are on it? DE. DE racing tires? That stands for Daddy and Emma. No, it stands for, <laughs> stands for Dave Enstrom, just for the record. Okay, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Not um, trying to take that from me. Do you like this car? Yeah. Yeah. And you ran really good with it, huh? Mm -hmm. My daughter not only didn't have to buy back in in Sacramento, but she went five rounds. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, you know, she she there was some mistakes made by some heavier hitters that had faster cars. And I told her, you got to chop the light down and just let the car eat. And uh, she did exactly that. And she ran really, really good. But we're getting to the point where you need what? R1 motor. She needs an R1 motor. <laughs> you need a little bit. You need a little bit more speed. Something that's a, uh, this right here, guys. This is just a basic, a basic slash extreme chassis. Can I go it's got a, no. Hold on. It's got a Proline transmission in it. And Emma, we're gonna keep this car because I know you love it so much, and it's always a good practice car to have or whatever. Just okay. A different motor. Huh? Just a different motor. No. Uh, we're gonna step it up a notch for my daughter tonight. <laughs> and you got a car. Just like daddy. Does it come with the radio? No, I have all that to put in it. You don't worry Get about that. Get a futaba. <laughs> <laughs> You're so awesome. Hey, do you want to open this up? Hand her a razor blade, please. Look, see these? And then what we're going to do is we're going to use your car, if it's okay, to set next to mine to Are see the... Are you going to build this tonight? It's already built. We're just going to put a clip. These are all the extra parts we're going to put on it to make it as fast as daddy's. So I feel that this car is out of the box with a couple tweaks 
every bit as consistent as any car out there. And I think that this is hands down, when you talk about the Traxxas Drag Slash, the DR10, they're great cars. I don't want to, I'm not saying that they're bad cars. If that's what you want to get, that's awesome. DR10 is associated, associated is an amazing company. I have a lot of associated products. Uh, Traxxas is a great company. I have Emma's cars Traxxas, my Patriot cars Traxxas. I started this whole thing with Traxxas. Um, but if you want to buy a cheap lower end kit, careful with that kid, um, <laughs> and, and you want to go out and be able to compete and do 70 miles an hour, this is the setup right here. Um, and and just for, for, you know, once you get it and you start racing it, you get a couple of these. This, so this is a $219 car, and this is about $110 worth of parts. So that's 300 bucks. You've got the cars already built. Um, so let's... Uh, Oh yeah, she's gonna need some diagonal cutters. Where what you, kind of tires are these? Can where you are you run? gonna find those? Daddy, yeah, can you run these yeah, tires? Move the plastic. If there might be some kind of cutters in there. Can you, run these, can you run these tires? No, we're not gonna run those tires. We're gonna put DE tires on. We're not gonna throw them away. So here, cut this. Can I? Yeah. Can here, I? Cut that one. Snap it. Okay, pop it out of there, baby. Oh, what did Emma get? A $103 car. <laughs> <laughs> A million dollar car. No, but this is why Daddy sold the Corleone. Was so that we could buy one of these for you because I think it's such a good car. It's going to allow you to go faster. Daddy, I hate these wheels. They're plastic. So look, this car... And this car are exactly the same. And if you want to get a close up, I can explain some of the differences here. Hey, Daddy. Huh? Yeah, what do you say? Thank you. You're very welcome. Give me a kiss. Okay. okay. So, did John text you back? Huh? Did John text you back? Damn, these things come stiff. No, not yet. Um, so, as you can see, I really liked the battery setup with the strap like this, okay? Um, and so what I did was I cut these off and when my servo was in here, I wanted to move my battery, all my R1 battery all the way up to the front. Um, and so what I did was I took this out and ditched it. I took this whole assembly up to the shock tower out and I ditched it all. And I just cut the very ends of this off and I mounted them more forward. Um, and, and that gave me the open... Uh, footprint I needed for my R1 speed control and the same weight gram cap pack right directly next to it to even out the weight on the scales. Uh, I, it was actually with the fan on the ESC was a little bit heavy on this side so I actually added some of my receiver stuff over here too. I tried to clump it all together to make up for it. So my Futaba receiver weighs about what the R1 fan work, uh, is and the R1 ESC weighs exactly what the capacitor weighs without the fan. So you can see why I did that there. Obviously we got my, my Judd special standard you know 10 gauge wire everywhere. We got the new black we went from the EC5s, all my stuff, uh, all of it's all the way. Um, but we went over to these new connectors uh, by um, McClan makes them. So, you know, the yellow ones, what were they called? The XT90s? Yeah, those okay, are the so same ones, but black, right? I had no idea all this time. Those were made by McClan. So oh, they, really? Yeah, they just started making them in black. They were the ones that, that started those. So um, I like the EC5s. The EC5s have just the highest rating of this. Um, but the EC5s, after a while, um, the blue cover to them, the blue slip that the, the connectors go into, they get tired and they get worn and fatigued. Um, and these ones seem to... to you don't have any of those better. laying around, do you? The EC5s. Yeah, you know. to show what you're talking about. I don't. Um, so anyway, you can see the differences here again, big time in the back. Okay. We got the bigger wheelie bar. We got the different, see what I'm talking about? See how, how, how gummy these are? Well, your body's gonna, gonna bounce around on that. Um, so that's why I went to this, this stiff over here. What was that? Uh, my phone. Your phone? Oh, I was like, man, I don't have wind chimes in here. <laughs> um, so you, like I said, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to make one of these fast. Um, uh, and I think this is a really, really, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. This is going to be a really killer no prep car. Um, like real no prep. No, uh, 
you know, if I can do, if I can make this thing on no prep do 70 where, you know, the ghost was doing 63, you know, this car is yeah. just going to murder people, especially what I got planned for, for Delta next week with our tire prep, our tire game and, um, and, and stuff where we're going to go and run just a rubber tire that's totally clean and dry. Um, and hopefully these cars are going to do what I think they're going to do. So, um, very, very, uh. Oh, you know what? That might be part of the problem. I just think I found just the problem. Why, uh, I got a tire lean in. Look at that. Look at that chafe on the inside. Um, this has got voodoos on it. Um, next weekend, it actually won't have voodoos on it. It'll have DE Outlaws on it for no prep. Because um, those are the tire that are, I think, are going to be dominant out there. Um, and, uh, uh, what's, uh, you got my back, huh? And Emma's gonna be in this 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 rad mobile here too. I mean, this I love the way it sits. I love the way it looks, and better yet, I love the way that it works. Bye, baby. Um, so yeah, it doesn't need much, man. It just needs the, the R Design wheelie bar, and it needs the R Design. I mean, you don't even need to use this. This is just something that with the with the the body mount that I wanted to do to make it stiffer, um, to to make the drivetrain, you know, bulletproof. Use the stock top shaft. Use I'm even using the stock. Um, I'm even using the stock spur gears and stuff, which is something I haven't been able to do with close to three horsepower in a long time, because uh, I was just blowing gears up. But this this one's taking it. So, um, you know, I got the. You want to get the heavy duty axles and you want to get the G2 diff. Um, you can find the G2 diffs. These are a little bit easier to get than the low C idler gear that nobody can get. Um, and then a long bar. Get yourself a real bar. So. Um, yeah. So I'm really, I'm really, I'm really um, excited to get. Um, I actually, I might even give Emma this car because it runs so good. And I might use this one uh, for when I pick a bullet up from Mark, just because it's a brand new build. Um, and other than that, I mean, it's, uh, I just, I don't know, I'll come more to, to, to share that experience. I think that it's not every day you can go in this sport where people spend thousands and thousands and thousands. I've got cars that are worth $2,500 without electronics. There's parts in them you can't buy because we made them. You know, um, and to go spend 219 bucks at Jake's Performance Hobbies at 707-586-3375 and then put another 120 bucks, 110 bucks into it and go out and be able to compete legit at 70 miles an hour, uh, I think is, is, is a pretty big darn deal. So pretty darn big deal. So I just kind of wanted to, to go through that and, and explain kind of what we're doing with the 22S. <laughs> Um, I'm, and this thing's still running the stock plastic shocks. It's got the stock shock towers. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, Tim Barth is asking about, um, arm flex. What do you think about the arm flex? You know, I don't see it being horrible. I know that Mark Vine was, was talking about that too. They are kind of gummy. Um, you know what I might try and do with them is I might try to, um, I put them upside down on tape and fill them up to the brim with epoxy. And then peel the tape off and then sand them down and they're nice rigid arms. Now, you know, I mean, it's it, it, it's a crappy way to do it, but it's something we've been doing in RC for a long time. And those arms are easy to do it because they actually have, you know, um, um, through passages, you know. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I just started with this after, you know, I had three practice hits on the car and then the two practice hits I've had in Sacramento and then the five or six, I got like 12 or 13 passes on this car. That's it. So I don't know. I'm going to find different stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to want to improve stuff uh, and we'll get to that when we find it. Um, but it is something that I think needs to be addressed uh, with the car. Um, I've heard it from Mark Vine. I've heard it from another guy and I've got this gentleman here asking about it. And as I feel them, they do feel pretty gummy. So, um, you never know. I, I kind of want to keep the stock arms until somebody makes a replacement stronger arm that's in the same shape. They are very unique on the 22S because they're a really heavily swept arm. The arms sweep back. Um, and I think that's part of what helps it do what it's doing. Um, got a, else? You got a gremlin down there. Can you see her? Yeah. Emma, what are you doing? She's playing with the tires. Oh, okay. <laughs> so other than that... Um, Tire prepping. <laughs> <laughs> She's tire, tire prepper. She actually, we've been playing with uh, a couple of the little Schumacher wheels and, and shaving those down. And before we shave them down with sandpaper on the on the on the drill lathe, um, we we take a um, a fingernail clipper and we clip off as much as we can 
uh, beforehand, and she was doing that for me last night. I was like, that's pretty cool. Hey, kid, you want to learn how glue works? Oh, that reminds me, you knocked the glue over when you went, went over there last time. I did? Yeah, I don't know if it's open or not. It shouldn't be. I would hope not. Oh, it's, it's cool. It's close. Sometimes I'll leave it there with the cap off. Yeah. I was going to say something. And I, Do you really? My mouth overran it and I kept going. <laughs> I don't I don't leave the cap off my glue. Sometimes I will. Why? Because sometimes it's late at night and your mouth is dry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know, like super Whoa, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I got my safety glasses and my and my three M on, and I made you giggling. Yo, <laughs> Emma, what are you doing? <laughs> These were the tires off of Daddy's car. See, same ones. Are you putting them in sets? Anyway, so um. Yeah, if there's no other if there's no other questions or anything, um, thanks guys for for stopping by. Kind of just wanted to give an update as to what we were doing and what worked and what didn't. Um, I really want to do. I think we're way overdue on a really big tech night, and I want. I know there's more and more people starting to ask simpleton questions in it again, and I think they just need a go-to video that covers gear ratios and ride right height and how to find the center of gravity of your car and. And, and, and how to scale the car and you know what I'm saying um, and, and what the percentages is mean you know you know not a lot of people mean you know if this car is is 70 30 then I could take a center line of the axle and a center line of the axle and this I, I measure up and I, and I equate that to 70 percent between those two lines and that's your center of gravity of the car you know stuff like that so um, there's a lot of tech stuff I want to get into that will maybe make somebody's life a little easier so, but tonight, um, I believe that I'm going to probably end up at Chuck E. Cheese, probably going to close it down. Um, <laughs> what, what are you doing? I got a lot more tires. We can go all the way to the ceiling. We got bags and bags of tires. Same. Yeah. So anyway, right. um, I wanted to, uh, uh, achoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to throw this at you. Do it. <laughs> That's enough. I don't want to throw it. Not, not when I don't have my hands over my face. You have just a bluish Smurf mustache. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for, for joining us um, for episode number 18. I want to give a huge shout-out to Paul Peterson and Shark RC Bodies that are making these. Uh, and, guys, yes, for the new guys who are getting in and seeing this, Emma, stop for a second. Okay? Will Shepard just called out Emma. Uh-oh. You got a call out, Emma. I will throw so one of these days I want to line up with Emma and see if I got a shot. So Emma was running, she was really, I was really proud of her. She was running a 2125 at 67 miles an hour. I mean, she was booking, dude. Yeah. And it just did the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, every single round. <laughs> um, and that's that's sometimes where a slower car can beat a faster car, you know? Consistency, man. Consistency. That's where it's at. So, we're going to try and keep the same thing uh, and, and, and just, just dial it into a faster car. Um, I think that these are much faster than the Traxxas cars. Um, I think they're a better foundation than the DR10. Well, they're, they're, all good, they're, they're all good. They're just a little bit tighter foundation. I they are. They're a tighter I haven't foundation. tried the new Traxxas. They come with they a little got. bit more heavy hitting equipment under the hood, and I think it's just a really good thing. So um, with that being said... Um, I want to give a huge shout out again to Steve Villanueva of R1, um, all the boys and girls that work over at Jake's Performance Hobbies, and Jake Rosen, the myth, the man, the legend. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to DE Tires. Uh, I want to give another shout out to uh, Madfish uh, Racing, um, and go over and check out those those wheel covers. I think there there's some bees knees. Um, for those of you asking me constantly when the R1s will be back in stock, uh, we're looking at the end of the month. Um, it's from what I've heard, don't hold me to that, but that's, 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 you know, as far as inside Intel, that's what I can say. I've heard it's the end of the month. Uh, that's, that's what we're all, we're all gunning for. Um, and, uh, I know that there's, there was a bunch of, I don't know if they still are now, but there was a bunch of motors a couple of days ago that were in stock that were really good motors. I think people bought them, bought them out. I don't know. Uh, I have to go back on the site. Um, so yeah, R1 stuff's coming. Um, R1 stuff is doing great. Um, one of the things we lost the other day in, in practice uh, it was actually in the Corleone car was, um, was, was my original ESC that I always tell people, dude, same ESC, two years, 
you know, it's resting next couple, to mine. <laughs> couple thousand hits. It's sitting right there, baby. <laughs> that was my original R1 ESC out of the Corleone. And now it it's a light out. switch. It's a light switch now, yeah. Uh, and then it was uh, it was also the same one that was in the uh, the Gunslinger. It was the Gunslinger, and it started life actually, believe it or not, in the Ghost. Yeah. So, yeah it was right right at the end there, huh? Right at the end, yeah. Yeah, and I went back to the hobby wing and sold it with the hobby wing, with the R1 in my new car. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it, guys. Th thanks a lot for joining us down uh, uh, down yet another adventure of uh, episode 18. Uh, I'd love to have some. Um, I really want to do, you know, especially my shark team. I want to do a tire night. What time is it right now? 6:45. It's 6.45. Um, you want to prep a tire real quick? Show people how we do it? I don't know where all your stuff's at. Um, you don't have anything set up. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You're, you're going to make a mess. You're going to get that stuff all over you. Then you're going to knock the bottle over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but hey, that's coming, guys. Maybe we'll do that next weekend. We'll have a couple cars out here. We'll have a couple different... Um, uh, like a tire that's in the bag and then mounted uh, and glued. And then the next one that's balanced and just a, um, um, a, 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 for instance, of each stage. And then once it gets on the car, we'll show you how to prep them, the tire warmers, when to use them, when not to use them, um, and stuff like that. Um, I think that that, that, that needs to, to get out there. You know, I, I've been doing it for about six months now, tire prepping six, eight months. Um, and and I, got it, I got it down pretty good, and I'm still learning a couple of tricks. I know that, you know, well, Emma, what are you doing with my foot? I'm trying to put it in the box. No. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, we, we got some new stuff to try and a little little info of what the guys in the sap were running last weekend. Um, um, and they were running very, very good on it. It's very sticky stuff. It's definitely um, what, what uh, divides the, the sport and outlaw class between 65 mile an hour cars and 75 mile an hour cars. Emily, you need to stop, please. You're making way too much noise. Okay. Um, and, uh, and these guys got it down, you know. Um, so I want to I wanna kind of go over some of the basics. Uh, I don't want to, you know, give away all my tricks, but, you know, for somebody that's coming into it and is racing in an area where, where, where tire prep is allowed, I want you to be able to know, you know, at least the basics to, you know, to, to get the stuff on the tire and, and what to do to the tire before. Then you'll learn from there. It'll um, get you started. And it's all about consistency. Finding, finding, you know, taking what I, the info I'm going to give out and and make and applying that to what you need to start doing, and then doing that the exact same way every, every time. Every time. Um, so, uh, and, and that's that's it's not just what you do is only fifty percent of it, but doing it every time and being consistent that is totally fifty percent of it. So, um, we can get into that stuff. No, no, no big, no big deal. But if you guys have any uh, any kind of niche um, segments that you want to see that I might be able to show, um, contact me. P <laughs> My, my messenger and uh we'll see if we can we can make something happen so um from all of us here at judd's rc motorsports myself rich levat peace out and uh and emma rose we're selling these tires for 500 dollars a pair what a million dollars a pair Those are hey prices. they've been testing and proven <laughs> a million dollars how many people we still got on 10 10 people a million dollars a pair oh Will Shepard, I don't think you can get her on the light. She's she cuts a pretty good light. She does cut a pretty good light, dude. She does. I caught her sleeping a couple times in the sack, but she she gathered it up. I told her that the light is everything. Watch the yeah. light. Normally so, she's pretty. She cuts a pretty mean light. You're a pretty awesome racer, dude. I'm really really proud of you. With them kid reaction times. All right. She, and for I'm those of you that are trying to get your kids into this and put them in a 12 turn car and stuff. They really won't take, uh, well, mine didn't anyway. Mine didn't really have a, a whole lot of interest in the thing um, until it, I, I got her in an outlaw car. And once she started going fast, all of a sudden it went from, Daddy, do we got to, to, Daddy, are we going to race this weekend or what? You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. it was huge. So um, keep that in mind if you're trying to get your kid into it. And get your kids into it. You know, today's kids are tomorrow's racers. So. And, this, and this way makes it a lot easier, too. Yeah, I mean, 200 bucks, dude. You know? Technically, you can put two hundred bucks in the car, the axles, and I think a wheelie bar, and go out and compete with it. You know, I really do. Of course, I'm always going to go lavish and overboard and put carbon fiber this, and that's just that's just my my genetic makeup. That's who I am. So, 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, get your kids into it, guys. Um, we're going to sign out. Thank you guys for watching episode 18. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of what we're doing and, and, and how good these little 22Ss are that I really believe uh, we're going to be we're gonna be shaking things up once we get a bullet chassis. So yeah. um, have a good night. Have a good weekend. God bless America and stay safe. Peace. All right, guys.